This episode is brought to you by Harry's. Go to harrys.com slash CAG to claim your special offer. Number 599. I'm your host, GPD, here in Long Island, New York. As always, we're joined by a man who's about to announce his new platform exclusive, Wombat. I'm going straight to Crackle. <laughs> crackle, good call. I mean, CISO. Right. Is, are, they, are those still around? I think Crackle might be. I thought but they I don't know. stopped Crackle. Oh. So you're saying that this contract is worthless? <laughs> yes. Maybe you're bringing Crackle back. I'm bringing Crackle back. Don't sing over the music. Would anybody <laughs> know if Crackle still existed or not? <laughs> I I don't even think Crackle exists outside of the Hershey's combo packs. It's the only way to get it. Yeah, right? They, you can't just buy a Crackle bar. I don't know. I changed the subject. Yeah, it sucks. Both <laughs> subjects suck. I don't want to talk about it either. Change it again, quick. <laughs> Why? What? Everyone likes those Hershey Miniature they, combo packs. They taste bad. I bet Shipwreck likes all the special darks. You eat them, but you recognize that it tastes bad. And I, it makes I don't really like bad. chocolate. Oh, that's right. I knew that about you. You're yeah. more of a candy bread, man. Bread and chocolate are not my, my friends. Yeah. It's weird. Unless there's a hot dog and cheese on it. Now we're talking. And, ch- and chili. But that's bread. Yeah. Chili. yeah. I, the chili I, might have chocolate bre- in it. Bread serves its purpose when I have to pick something up and eat it. <laughs> As a vehicle for something else. Right. Mm. Right. Understood. It's an edible napkin. That's a, sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I think that's how they marketed them in the, at the turn of the last century. Makes sense. Bread. The edible napkin. But it tastes better. Because people were eating napkins at the time. It was a problem. Was it? Yeah, they, you don't know that about the great 1895 napkin eat off. I don't, oh, I don't think they a, had napkins huge, back then. You didn't read about that in uh, high school? No. Mm, it was a big deal. No. Yeah. Anyway. So, Shipwreck, you're back from the dead. I am. That was a rough few days out there. I had like a 102 degree fever for four days straight. Wow. Pretty much no other symptoms, just 102 degree fever. Huh. Just like a virus, I guess. I guess. You just got to let those get out of your system. I don't think there's much else you can do. There wasn't. There was not much else I could do, but lay in bed, and that was pretty much it. I pretty much laid in bed. Did you watch The Price is Right every day? No, because like I could only watch like a half hour TV or it started to make me feel worse. Yeah, I know that feeling. Did you hallucinate? When I get a high fever, I get hallucinations. I So this is my high fever. This is what happens when I have high fevers. So it starts off like 99 in that range. I can start like feeling like I'm, eh, I'm a little bit off. It gets to 100. That's where my body's like, it is freezing in here. Mm-hmm. 101, it's like, it is hot in here. So take off all your clothes. And then 102 is where my mind just cannot stop organizing things. Nice. I knew it. Yes. So all of my fever dreams are me just organizing i don't even know what i'm organizing just like random boxes in my head that have to be organized <laughs> random you're organizing your thoughts in a way yeah, sure but it's like a i cannot stop it's, organizing it's things. your it's your brain trying to take control of a situation it has no control that over. that's yeah that's exactly what it's doing it's like maybe if i organize some stuff up here i can get past this i i get it it, t- it makes total sense total sense well, we're glad you're feeling better. Mm-hmm. I am. We missed you. Welcome back. I, I missed you guys too. I listened to the show last week. Oh, what'd you think? Do you have any show feedback? <laughs> <laughs> show feedback from Shipwreck. Yeah, Shipwreck says. Um, I I like that you skipped all the show feedback from the previous week. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Um, yeah, it was unnecessary. And I also, I knew exactly the restaurant that Cheapy was talking about. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh I, yeah, the place where I've I... Actually... That, was, that was the the knee injury. Yes. Yeah, it's the, the knee injury. Right? Yes. Yeah, yes. I, I knew the restaurant as well, but uh-huh. yes. I, mm-hmm. uh, I have picked up Ty from camp before. Um, that, that was something that you got, you acted like it was a totally ridiculous ask last wait, week. Wait, what, 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 who, what, what? I don't get it. You said you, somebody, it was something about you picking up Ty from camp and you're like, I don't take shipwreck in, in Wombat. With oh, me, so. oh, somebody asked if you were there. If yeah. You, if you came to pick up Ty. Right. Right. I mean, it was two and a half hours from my house. So mm-hmm. I didn't. I've picked up Ty from camp before though. Which camp? Science camp? Science, yeah, it's a lot closer. <laughs> so, other than that, you guys you guys did fine. Good. Thank you. Yep. I'll take it. Mm-hmm. I'll take did fine. You know, you weren't the only one with show feedback. No. Yeah. Mm. Aries dog had to say, woof, woof, woof. You, guys were on, <laughs> you guys were on fire for this episode. I listened at work and literally laughed out loud several times. Several. Good. Several. Yeah, I I, uh, and, I agree. I listened to it a little while I was making it, and it seemed all right. There you go. S- seemed like he had some. And jokes. regarding, <laughs> seemed like there was a few, yeah. few jokes in there. Yeah, there were some jokes. It was like it was a decent episode. Yeah. Reg- and regarding cleaning up after your kids at a restaurant, yeah. Shanna fan had to say, "I am definitely the textbook first time dad in a restaurant. We use a high chair cover." Wipe down the table with a non-alcoholic wipe. Use sticky bowls, and when we were done, grab napkins and clean the floor before we leave. That's a nice. uh, that's a thing. What are, what are sticky bowls? Are those bowls that stick to the table? Yeah, yeah. If, if he's the ones I'm thinking of, it's the ones that have like suction. Wow, cup. Yep. that's good innovation. Like, that's yes. mm-hmm. Yeah. So while you were talking about that, I assume, like I've eaten at that restaurant, I don't know, three times. <laughs> it's good. We go there a lot. Now you know. So, I know my name. Uh, Dash will be coming with us this time. Uh huh. He's gonna go right in the water. <laughs> I'm not getting up. I'm telling you. He right is going to be the kid eating stuff directly off the table or off, off the, the floor. floor. Uh, off the bird. He's gonna fight the birds for it. He could fight a bird. That's cool. Um, and then when when we leave, all that stuff will be on the floor, but we will tip generously. There you go. That's appropriate as well. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Right. That that is our mo for leaving restaurants. Right. Sabrina is very excited to see Dash and Emmeline. She's very excited for both of them. So yeah, you're you be guys warned. looking forward to getting punched in the nuts. <laughs> well, luckily for Sabrina, that's not an issue. <laughs> <laughs> Dash can't reach my nuts. That's a challenge. He's pretty yeah. tall. He? he might get me in the belly. He's like I'm short, eighty five, eighty fifth percentile height, and like. 25th percentile weight. Wow. Like Not that. bad. Probably weighs more than Ty. Long and lean. All right. Might be might, maybe more than Elliot. Should be interesting. <laughs> all six, six, all five kids together, unless GP finds another one, then it'll be six. What? No, I'm not. What? No, what do you want? All five kids are going to be together soon. Right. And they said, unless I it's find a, another one. <laughs> yeah, I said six at first by mistake. Oh. And I said, oh, mm-hmm. The one I have locked in my basement? Yeah, you know, the other one. Raul. (laughs) I don't have a basement. (sighs) That's how you know I'm joking. Also, because you wouldn't lock a child in your basement. And I would never name him Raul, because that's weird. See, these are all... We all knew it was a joke. Mm -hmm. We've spent so much time saying that it has to be a joke, that now everyone knows it isn't. Right. Right. Now I'm questioning it. (laughs) Does he have a basement? (laughs) <laughs> mm. Maybe I added one. Maybe our rules a family name. I thought we. I thought about trying to add a basement. So there's that's that's what you want to do with houses generally. Is add, you just want to add a basement. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can I add a basement underneath my driveway? Like it doesn't need to be directly underneath the house. Wouldn't that be I'd easier? Start start digging. <laughs> but yeah. I think the cesspool is under there. Then yeah. no. <laughs> well, it's just, you know it's no way to tell until you try. Just start smelling. No, it's definitely. I don't it think is. you want. I don't think you want a living room next to the cesspool. <laughs> no, no, I'm not. Li- no, I said a basement. I know, but what would you put? Like, would it be finished? It to be a ping pong table, ping pong stadium, uh-huh. poop, ping poop stadium. Ping- it's <laughs> next to the uh, cesspool. You know, it'd be cool if it could have like a glass wall to the cesspool. 
And then you can like look at it yeah, and go, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh, someone, someone's using it. This is a project that I think people can get excited about. Mm. Especially your neighbors. I think most of all your neighbors. Well, be they won't know this. because everything's happening underground. You know, They won't see it while it's being built? Well, un- it'll be underground. They won't know. And the dirt fr- has got to go somewhere. It's, I mean, there'll be a lot of removal hey, and, tr- you know. Dude, they, they, we had a whole house renovation for like a a year i think they you know they probably forgot about that one it's time to remind them what how bad it could really be good luck you know what i'm saying yeah sounds like you're on board for my my shitty ping pong project although if you do it over the garage that that uh garage floor slash roof to your ping pong room has to be pretty strong if it's gonna hold cars on top of it which is why generally people don't put basements underneath the parking area of their house oh yeah that makes a lot of sense yeah so i mean i'm no engineer right and i don't know where to find one right but i'm just saying that's something you got to consider all right in the backyard then that makes more sense yeah we went to uh the philip johnson's glass house and he had like an underground art bunker he had a lot more money though Mm. and space and art and talent Mm-hmm. And everything, pretty much. Yep. So it's time to move on. To? Watching this, bitches. I. What do you got? I've been watching The Boys, and I know you have. What episode are you up to? Five, maybe? I'm up to episode seven. No. You passed me. I'm going fi- to finish it tomorrow. Yeah, it's a, good, it's a really good show. It's the RoboCop of superhero shows so it's basically if you don't know what it, and this is with no spoilers whatsoever but the, the concept is what if we lived in a world like exactly like we lived in today we have all these superhero movies and superheroes are such a big part of our pop culture except what if they were all real and also in that scenario just like you know disney is making all these movies they are making these movies as well and k- taking all the money and they also the superheroes work for them not you know not just for the making of movies and selling products but also in their day-to-day superhero activities they're all working for a company so it's like robocop in that way where the police department is owned by a, p- a private company or a public company rather yeah but so it's very interesting and mm-hmm. uh, not for kids, certainly. Although I did manage, Ooh. I do give Ty recaps of the episodes. I sanitize them, of course. But like, I was gonna say, and then and then the guy no, blew no, up. I don't. Yeah, I leave out the sex. No, I leave that. I leave that stuff in, but I leave out like the sexual assault. And he was just holding her hands. No, I, I I'll do that. I'll give him the, those details. He can handle that. He just doesn't want. I don't think he needs to hear about the sexual assault and yeah. that type of stuff. But it's very it's definitely uh, not for kids. It's very interesting, and Mrs. Cheapy likes it a lot because it's a lot about <laughs> a lot of issues that affect women in the workplace. I feel um, a lot of interesting topics outside of just like superheroes destroy things. Yeah, no, it's really good, and I like there's I like that because a lot you know, especially with superhero TV shows. Yes, I find that they try the superheroes tend to not be very good at. Heroing? Oh, I had my or acting, on. or acting, or uh, you know, just like on Arrow. Arrow is, and whatever he tries, he tends to fail. Or even in even Daredevil, just wasn't very good at daredeviling. He got his ass which, kicked a lot, a lot, and it bothered me. And in this one, not the superheroes, but the boys, the the you know the team trying to infiltrate the superheroes, they're good at what they do they don't just fumble and fail their way into success yeah which i find a lot of these shows do yeah 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 it's 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 really like a unique take on the genre and if 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 you're sick of the genre i think that you will probably like this because it's the anti superhero show even more so than like a doom patrol yes which is another fail their way into success show yep yep no, it was good. That's a good point. I didn't. I I had not thought of it that way. Um, yeah, and I feel like I've had enough of those shows. I, I I've had enough failing failing their failing their way into success. Yeah, superhero TV shows. I think that was every Marvel show. 
Jessica Jones, Daredevil, Luke Cage, Iron Fist. It was all they, you know, the the bad guys lost in the end, but it was it took 13 episodes because the good guys kept screwing up. Right. The good guys are never super competent. Yeah. And I like that and they're not always competent on you know the boys, but they're generally competent and I like that change of pace. Yeah. That's good good point. I knew mm-hmm. you're here for a reason. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> And to so you small. don't like greatest American hero is what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. Well, or inspector gadget. Yeah, or yeah. Or inspector. I actually hate inspector gadget. What? Neither, what? Yeah. I hate inspector gadget. That's ter- That's a bad take. It is a bad I- take. <laughs> it was my favorite show growing up. And do you know there's, there's, I think there's one episode where he, he solves the case on jerks off. No, no. Where he solves the case without Penny doing it. Where yeah, he actually exactly. comes through and, and figures it out. And there's, an, there's a, maybe one or two episodes where, the voice is off. Either it's not Don Adams or Don Adams took too many bong hits or something and his face blew out his throat. I don't know. It, sounds, it's, it must be a different guy. But that's, uh, that's just something I remember from my, my youth. I used to have dreams about the Inspector Gadget Mobile. You know, Shipwreck has his fever dreams. Mm-hmm. I would just dream about owning the Gadget Mobile and changing it from the van to the... To the sports, to the sports car. car. Yeah, to the sports car. Just that that opening sequence for that that show. I just I oh, think yeah, it was amazing. I mean the, I the just so, the the police light. It's just yeah. art. Yep. It's just I agree. it's fantastic. I remember the Christmas I got the Inspector Gadget uh like twelve inch tall figure. Yeah, I remember that. I was sort of growing out of my, it. My my I feel like my my brother may have had that. That was that was a fantastic figure. You I, I remember you having like that, it in the, the house, but it was his hat and everything. So. Mm-hmm. That looked expensive. I, it, it, was pricey. it was it was pricey. it was like my main gift that year. Yeah. It yeah, had yeah. the fabric coat. I uh-huh. remember that. Yep. The helicopter uh hat. Yep. That it was pretty cool. Yeah, it was too big though to be used as a uh, to use with other action figures, and that's why I wasn't interested in it personally. Well, you also hated Inspector Gadget. <laughs> I also I I and I did I did not like that show. I dressed up. That would have been a really Gadget. weird present for you, Ahmed. I, Here's an Inspector Gadget, and I would have been like, yeah. you know what though? At that age, you handed me a toy. I would have liked it. Right. That's, that's you know, especially when you find out how expensive it was. Mm-hmm. <laughs> go go gadget <laughs> boner yep Boing. also both uh, inspector gadget and the simpsons have a chief quimby so no mayor quimby well that's right it's mayor quimby oh now i feel stupid sorry dude no, it's okay i'm gonna go hide my head and you're half there i know i tried i dressed up as inspector gadget for my temple halloween party or Purim maybe Purim do you dress up in costumes for Purim yeah Purim is is Jew Halloween oh, so I was probably for Jew Halloween I was Inspector Gadget I, mean, I think I had the skate I think I had skates on too so I was like oh it's pretty good yeah it's pretty good and my mom told me to like you know act like Inspector Gadget but I don't think I was able to pull that together you mean fall down no just like <laughs> you know throw out the catchphrases like things that I could do now but not that I could do when I was a teenager. Can you pull off I'm... a Don Adams impersonation? <laughs> uh, what do you say there, Chief? Go, go, so Gadget bad. Copter. That wasn't so good. No, what do you mean? I just need I just need the material. It's been a while. It's been a minute since I've watched an Inspector Gadget episode. Nope. No. Sorry, you, you're I'm out. sorry, Penny. You'll have to sit this one out. Nope. Brain? Not good enough. Nope. Keep trying. Brain? I want to get more. Her. What if I pinch my nose? Does it get better? That's not bad. It's a little more Tennessee tuxedo and less Inspector Gadget, but I'll take it. Oh, I've got a call coming in on the gadget phone. This sounds like one of the episodes where his voice was off. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Look, I haven't, um, you know, it's been a few minutes since I've watched an Inspector Gadget episode. It's not exactly fresh in my brain. Look, I could tell you the details about the gadget mobile. That's ingrained in my brain, but you know, maybe I, the voice I need a little help with that. It, not, I, not that it had talented. like those uh, '80s sunglasses shades on the back of it, right? The slats. Oh, yes, the slats, like on a on a Mitsubishi uh, mm-hmm. something or other. Yep. Yeah, yeah, those are fucking badass. Whew, I'm getting all fired up now. I hot, bet. Hot I bet bothered. you could. You could. Uh, 
have a little that, that sounds like a better project for you than a basement oh like a, to, a, like a i've never seen a um like a real version of a gadget mobile a real live version have you i don't know but i know i'll see what happens gadget <laughs> mobile replica car <laughs> let's see <laughs> I don't see anything yet. I mean, there was... Oh, because when you do it, it shows you the one from the live action movie. Oh, it's right. Let's, let's forget that existed. Yeah, which, again, yes, you, you are correct. That okay, I, I see somebody... It's not going to transform, with a, though. ...with a 300ZX. It's not going to transform, and it's not going to be... The, it's not going to have the claw shooting out the front. It's just not going to be good. Nope. You're right. <laughs> forget it. No, no one is disagreeing with you on this. I'd rather have the Night Rider replica, which is a tried and true nerdy thing mm-hmm. that really exists, and you can you could do. Yep, I did buy the Rocket. I saw League. like a I passed a, like a Chevy Cavalier or something <laughs> uh-huh. that was had all painted up and had all the pinstripes and everything from the 1960s Batmobile. That's <laughs> different. Uh-oh. Yeah, that's what I thought. Oh. There's a there's a, a house on that. Uh, we have to pass every time we go to my parents' house, and they have an A-team van in their driveway. Every that's time. cool. I support that. Yeah, I'm like, that's the A-team van, and my kids are like, I don't know what that is. It's the A-team. So, All right. they need to watch the A-team. Is where I'm going with that. I've got to watch this, bitches. <gasps> what do you got? We rented the latest Ip Man movie. It's and co- how is it? I had to look up the title because I. F- Forgot it, so I'm looking at it right now. It's called Master Z, the Ip Man Legacy, and it stars Dave Bautista. Is that how you say his name? Uh huh. From the Guardians of the Galaxy movies. Yeah, he plays um, an American. Drax the Destroyer. An American guy in the movie, and he fights, and it's uh, it's. So these he, movies are called Ip Man, huh? Ip I always, Man. I always read them as IP Man. No, it has nothing to do with computers. It takes place. No, I thought it had to do with intellectual properties. No, it doesn't have that. That would be that that. would be IT man, uh, GP. No, like IP addresses. Oh, I got you. Okay. Um, No, it doesn't. It takes place before intellectual property as well. Um, It takes place in Hong Kong in like the colonial times. So, so you're saying that colonial Hong Kong people couldn't have had intellectual properties? I'm saying that they probably didn't have a a method method of, of registering them in a legal way. The Patent Office. Uh, look, that would be a very boring movie. This movie is about kung fu, and <laughs> I'd like to register my intellectual property. <laughs> yes, here in Hong Kong. Hello, my name Colonial is Colonial Hong Kong. <laughs> my name is David. And what might your intellectual property be, sir? <laughs> Are you saying like Young Einstein was a bad movie? <laughs> that is a bad movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. To be fair, that's a bad movie. Yeah, who's serious? <laughs> Sorry, that was your line, probably. <laughs> it was. If I gave I was, you another five seconds. You would have. Oh, I was about to, and then you you cut me off. Yeah. No, anyway, it's it's a pretty enter- Master Z it, Man Legacy like, was pretty entertaining. the The problem is with these movies now is be- they have the technology to computer enhance everything, all the fight scenes, and it. They can't. They can do it right, but they can't do it a hundred percent at you know perfectly, right? It works. I'd say the fight scenes work eighty five percent, or rather eighty five percent of the fight scenes look good, and fifteen <laughs> percent look ridiculous because it's just so fake. Because it's all comp- it's all done on computers. It doesn't ruin the movie, but it makes you wonder if they really needed to add that stuff after all, isn't there just like enough with straight up wire work and, you know, like erasing the wires, how, like how ridiculous does it need to be? Um, but it was entertaining. I would recommend renting it. I'm happy. I spent five bucks or whatever it was. Good job. Dave Batista was, was entertaining. It's fun watching him throw punches at things and people. So yeah, good job, everybody. How about some shopping news? A little uh, rare shopping news. Okay. okay. This is literally news about shopping that I read and I wanted to share with you. I thought it was really cool. Our friend Ben uh, Gilbert, who works Gilbert. for business. Ben I, Gilbert. Yeah, I know his name. He's a good friend of yours. Yeah, You've I known know. him for like a decade. Yeah, I know. I chat with him. Anyway, he had a good article that came up that he posted today. 
that goes in, takes you inside all of the game stops of New York City. It's basically a tour of New York City's game stops and basically gives you like really a detailed look of what a, you know, you're in New York City, right? You have the most traffic pretty much of anywhere. If the game, the game stops here should be the best in the country and should be doing the best in the country. And when you look at the pictures, they all look pretty sad. It, they look like uh, like flea markets because now they're all filled with all these tchotchkes because the game business isn't good enough anymore and they have to sell all these you know, figures and toys and stuff. And they look like they've just been thrown on top of everything else because cause they have. Uh, did you look at this? Are you looking at these I pictures? Did. Yeah. yeah mm-hmm. um, There's... Why are your guys' GameStops so big? They're they're not. I think what okay. happened was the New York ones were the ones in, in because they've probably been there for a really really long time because you lock in these leases in in, in New York City for a long time, um, and I think when these leases come up, they they try to get rid of these big stores. Um, like for example, there were you know in our at Roosevelt Field, which is Wombat and I's major mall. There used to be two GameStops in there. One was in a much bigger store than the other, and they 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 got rid of the big store, which I thought would weird. The, but the small store is too small. Right, the small the the small store it looks like a like a hoarder almost, like a yeah. hoarder's store. There's no room for more than three people to stand <laughs> in it at a time. It's weird. It's just like this article, like Ben points out in this article. It. The stores are messy and they look like they have like a flea market vibe in a way with like makeshift tables thrown up and cardboard boxes with junk in them and, you know, yellow price tag stickers, five dollars here. Like it's a weird thing. It's just they're so fucked. Like they need to redo their entire image. Like there's nothing really salvageable about GameStop. I've been thinking. No, there's nothing salvageable. That's not. It's not necessarily their fault. It's just that this isn't a viable business anymore. The you know, Ben's blockbuster uh, analogy is pretty, you know, accurate. Well, it's oh that they're like well they're selling the the you know the crazy thing is like they're selling blockbuster T-shirts inside the GameStop and mm-hmm. it's a little too on the news. Um, but I was talking with Mrs. GP at dinner tonight about another you know what could what could a date GameStop have done to prevent themselves from being in this situation what can they do to get them out of this situation it's just amazing how they didn't they never made that they never made a steam competitor what about a twitch competitor how come how come ninja we'll talk about ninja later but how come gamestop isn't announcing today that ninja's streaming on their platform they that, tried a gamestop a pretty, tv yeah it's a pretty wide like and they did have success with Game Informer, you know, for mm-hmm. as much as much success as you as as any other video game magazine could have had. Again, a very old school like yeah. type of proposition it, here. So, a magazine. so you know, in in some ways, they did have success with third with you know third party ideas. It just but these are all old school ideas. Like when yeah. you see like Steam coming up, and like okay, Steam has. You know what do they have? Like eighty percent of the market when they were before Epic, or find a way to integrate with Steam. I don't know. No, no, how fuck that. Fuck that. They have more money than they have. They have plenty of money. Like they can make. I, they can I totally... was going to say to say they have more money. Than but I don't know. We don't know. We don't yeah, know. They I... did at some point. They at did. some point they did. Some they point. did at some point. They could have easily put together like a a full on Steam competitor that had all the features. They did a half ass like downloadable client that just was was it yeah didn't they have something it was just a a, a file trans way to transfer a file from them to you it wasn't it wasn't like a platform you know when they saw twitch when they saw justin tv and when and twitch coming up plenty of money to put into into something like that i mean it's just so totally different totally different well i I guess it's obvious now, like, but it's not, it's, it's, they, it was why, obvious. Why couldn't they, they have just gone back in time and set up a website no, that sold books? It's, it's like you have, look, you're <laughs> what about the, an electronic bay? You, why didn't they think of that? <laughs> well, I mean, that, you know that seems more likely than, than what you're saying. I would say GP, as far as they yeah, sell, at least u- that's selling sell used, used items. items. Yeah. 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 But it's yeah. too, you want to diversify your, your, your revenue streams because they look, you know, the writings on the wall, the discs are going away eventually. And that used games are your, are basically your, your profit center. 
So we have to get out of this. And yeah, they had the magazine with... Uh, they had know. the Think Geek. They had all the... But that's just another... I, I, I was going to say, because Think Geek wasn't a bad idea. It's just I mean, another Hot old Topic school. seems to it's be a, doing okay. It's a store. I mean, it's not like... It's not a digital... But that's what they, they are. are. They're, they're a store, though. They're a retail <laughs> operation. Right. But those 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 operations are in danger. Those are the operations sure. that need but to... But that's or, what they or are. Do, or would the better idea, do you... You know, if you're the Mr. GameStop, do you franchise out the GameStop license and make it like an in-store thing inside a Target? Like you rebrand the video game section of Target. The brand is worth Target, less than nothing. And then you start selling used games in Target. The brand is is, is That didn't work much, either, though. Used yeah. games in, in those stores Well, that's are, because are Target employees didn't... It wasn't their focus. I'm saying sure. you take someone whose focus it is to do that, you're basically outsourcing the video game section of Target Great. to GameStop within Target. Sort of what, like how Target has with this? players towards what's, the What's end. Target's benefit here? They get, they'll get some money out of that. They would get some money. It wouldn't be all yeah, the okay, GameStop's They get junk up their store. Yeah, it's that's never not, happening. It's not, none yeah. of these things are I, happening. I'm just It's not thinking. a good idea. It's just, it's not even, oh, a, yeah. it doesn't fix the problem. In the your pro- idea of building a time machine it's and not starting a time. Steam it's, before Steam did. It, I, I, who said that? I said, when Steam had 80% of the market, it's not too late. You can make a fucking, you're GameStop. You're the major distributor of video games in the country. You can make an online platform and do what, do what you're doing digitally and make a real competitor. Uh, but they'd had to change their philosophy completely because right. I, their their relationship with publishers and everything is is has always been tenuous because of their whole used market. Right. But they could have come in and said, hey look, okay, Epic, you know, do an epic and say, hey, we'll give you a better better percent, a uh, better split. And now they're now they're looking really good to their public to their publishing partners. Right? It's just it's not that complicated. And <laughs> you know, if you're a billion dollar business and you realize that discs are going, everyone knows that discs were going away, you know, 10 years ago. It's just a matter of time, right? It's it's not a matter of when, if it's going to happen. It's it's going to happen. So at that point, you're like, all right, you know, selling used thing, products, physical products is, cannot be our business in 15 years. Let's start thinking about what other things we can do, like things on the Funko internet. Funko Pops. Like, right, that doesn't, it, you know, everybody sells those. It's just, yeah, it's just, there's no, I, you know what I think the problem was? They, they were have so, the ex- exclusive Conan O'Brien one. Right, right. Yeah. I think the problem was, like, even when they, when GameStop.com launched and, the, you know, the whole, their whole online presence, I think they never really wanted it to be that great because they don't want to stop people from coming into the stores and trading in the used games. Sure. So I, I yes, bet you that it always is, took That was their bread and butter and they... The question, you know, it, who they owns, were very successful at it. They're it's a just, public company, right? Absolutely. GameStop? Yeah, they okay. are. Okay, okay. Yeah. It's not like in a holding company or that. No, kind of no. Thing. St- still, they're public. Is that true? Yep. Okay. GME. I, I, their stock is in the single digits now. I sold it when it was like twenty something, like a, a long, long time ago. Good for you. Um, I could now it went much high. It went higher than that. It went significantly higher than that after. And what did you do with that forty dollars? No, it was more than $40. <laughs> um, anyway, it's just like, uh, it's so frustrating. And I have, I, you know, I have some good ideas. Like, I'm not saying like it's going to save them, but. Well, now that the stock's in the single digits, why don't you buy it all up and make, make do whatever you want? Because I don't. <laughs> what are you, nuts? <laughs> I don't have that kind of money. It's, it's still, it's still a multi-billion they had a good company. Run. Wow, they had a, good a hostile run. takeover of GameStop by GPD. No, I that would be you're great. I would, I would love those headlines. I just want to read that on on a WallStreetJournal.com. I'd have to win a lot of Fortnite tournaments for that to happen. Cheap ass gamer CEO David Abrams. Right. No. <laughs> no. I have some good ideas. I'll tell you after the show. I don't want to give them all good ideas away for free. Okay. You know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know if they're good at it. Sell ideas. it to a hedge fund, liquidate everything. That's probably what will fa- happen. Fail on purpose and make a profit because that's how hedge funds make money somehow. I don't know. You know, Toys R Us it. They need to redo Sears. their whole brand. It's just, there's no there's no positives. Like, what is their brand? When when I, when I you think of GameStop, if, like, what's, 
Like, do you think of the logo? Do you, what do you think of? Like, nothing good, right? I think of, oh, it's just the only place that has it in stock. Right. Like, there's nothing, like, you used to think of that, like, remember they had, like, that bunny mascot thing? Like, that retro, they had, like, a little retro. No. No, you don't yeah. remember that with, like, the coins? They, they used to make, like, Flash games? Yes. Yes, I do. Yeah, and there was, like, a little bunny thing, and that was, like... Kind of cutesy. It wasn't like anything great or anything, but like Buck the Bunny talking mascot. Mascot is that okay. what it is? I didn't know he had a name. I'm like, it was nothing great. I'm not like can, trying to say it was anything great. You can buy a stuffed animal of him for ninety dollars on eBay right now. <laughs> Fantastic. But I don't know. Like, what's the what's the brand? Like, uh, it could have been something. I don't know. What Buck the Bunny. What the. <laughs> I I completely forgot about Buck the Bunny. Anyway, that's okay. Yeah, of course. I don't think he was around for very long. No. Well, check out well since this uh, Ben's article brought off this discussion. uh, It's on Business Insider. It's the GameStop New York tour. I'm sure you can find it. Um, should we do new releases or maybe we should talk about Harry's? I think we should talk about Harry's. You know, Wombat, a lot of guys buy disposable razors when they travel. But this summer, you don't have to sacrifice quality for price. You know that, Wombat? I, you know what I love most about Harry's, Wombat? What? I like that they satisfy my entire shaving needs. All of them. From the high-quality blades to the fantastic uh, shaving cream and gel to all the stuff that you need post-shave. The post shave spray. I don't, it's probably not called spray. Mist is the name, and the uh, I like the uh, the post shave balm as well. It's like a cream wombat. I know you don't probably don't know that word bomb. You pro- I, you're I probably thinking of like the explosion. And, and I, it's what I was thinking. Yeah, I know. I'm trying to. I'm friend. here to help you out, man. You're you're a good friend. Harry, <laughs> Harry's founders were two <laughs> regular guys tired of getting ripped off and paying for overpriced gimmicks. You know, things like vibrating heads, flex balls, and, you know, unflexible balls, all of those types of nonsense. Harry's makes quality, durable blades at a fair price, just $2 per blade. If you don't love your shave, let them know, and they'll give you a full refund. This summer, refresh your wallet and your face with a Harry's trial set. It comes with a weighted ergonomic handle for an easy grip. Five blade razor with a lubricating strip and a trimmer blade for a close shave. Rich lathering shave gel that will leave you smelling great. And a travel blade cover to keep your razor dry and easy on the go. Listeners of our show can redeem their trial set at harrys.com slash CAG. Make sure you go to harrys.com slash CAG to redeem your offer and let them know we sent you to help support this show. Well said, Wombat. Thank you. And thank you, Harry's. Woot. And thank you, Shipwreck, for bringing us to the new releases. Okay. Hey, now. Hey, that, that new Wolfenstein game is out. People have opinions on that. <laughs> Wolfenstein Youngblood. What, it has too many women in the game? Is that the problem? Uh, I don't know. Not all Nazis are bad, I saw at one oh. point. Also, it has microtransactions that are, people oh. are unhappy with. Mm-hmm. I feel like they've been putting out a it's lot a, of Wolfenstein stuff lately. It's a co-op game, too, which I'm like, is this something that Mrs. Shipwreck and I would like playing together? Probably. I bet if you would, if you wanted one, they would probably give you a code in like 10 minutes. It depends. How much of a social justice warrior is she? I I, I don't know. Does she think there are good people that. on both sides? <laughs> <laughs> Not all uh, Nazis deserve to be sh- to shot up. Where's the game that... I, I'm sure this game is Nazi. not supposed to be political. Right. It, it's an apolitical Wolfenstein game. Cool. <laughs> what about the virtual reality one? Which one's supposed to be better? I really... Uh, to, to be honest, nothing against Wolfenstein, but it's not really capturing my attention right now. Shouldn't Wolfenstein be about monsters? I don't. I don't know. Like, just the name, Wolfenstein. I think they need a reboot, too. Shouldn't it be like a a werewolf Frankenstein? (laughs) Like a werewolf Nazi? Like, no, I think you're a Frankenstein's monster Uh that turns into a werewolf at the full moon Uh and kills Nazis. 
And the doctor's name is Wolfenstein? And the doctor's name is Dr. Wolfenstein. Wolfenstein. Yes. Steen. <laughs> uh, yeah. So which one is better, the VR game or the non-VR game? The two different, totally different games. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say non-VR. I'm going to say wanna... non-VR. Oh, knowing nothing you're going to make me look it up? VR I was game. waiting for you guys. I'm not going to look up the VR game. No, I, I, do. <laughs> I already yeah. know my opinions on that. <laughs> Fine. I'll type 50% on Metacritic. Is that good? Mm. No, 52%. Hmm. Uh, uh, the other one probably did better. I'm the other one's like yeah. a, around a 70 or so. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I bet you that, yeah, that other one makes you sick. Yeah, I've been hearing interesting things about the Blackout Club, which is like a murder mystery game. Yeah, I watched the trailer teenagers. for that, actually. Yeah, it looks cute. I feel like it should have been a, um, a Gamers uh, Club Unlocked kind of thing, but... Uh, what is what? that? Not, <laughs> no. A Best a Best Buy. I know. Where's my program? brain? No, you know the thing oh, on the Xbox. Oh, GameStop exclusive. No, the thing on the Xbox. Oh, what is it called? Oh, AIDS. <laughs> now I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell it's late and I'm tired. I'm like, what the Game hell pass. is that thing called? Game Pass. I'm like, Gamers Club. No, Game Pass. Yeah. So I'm mixing up all my stuff. I feel like it should be a Game Pass game. I feel I like you it, feel every game should be a Game Pass game. I was just about to say that. I was say, but I think every game should be a Game Pass game. <laughs> right. It works out in your favor when that happens. Yes, it does, because then I could try it and be like, eh, that was something I played. Aren't these last week's games? I no? was just going to say, Cage Garden Cock Robin's on yeah, here. Yeah. I, you know, I oh, never forget Cage Robin Cock Goblin. Oh, I guess we're terrible then. Who put the, uh, I, did somebody add? I did. Right. I did. But, uh, yeah, and oh, I thought they were the... Bad. Fuck, I was waiting for the new ones, and now tech-gaming.com is not even responding. I know. It looks like their site's down. What? Oh, no. Robert. That I can't help you with. Oh. So well, Cage Garden Cock Robin. Yeah, we better do a deep dive on this. <laughs> so we talked about it last week. I don't know. Let's see. We can check the Metacritic. Let's just type in Because cock. I looked, and it was the new Robin. releases for 731. So what's that about? Oh, my whole internet? Oh, no. Cage Garden. No. Oh, no. no reviews for Cage Garden Cock Robin. Oh, well. Sorry. No reviews. Not even a single review. Oh, man. Oh, Tech Dash Gaming Gateway Timeout. Ruined the whole show. Mm. Well, we can. I know. I have an idea. We can go move on with the show and then check later. Check, see check if it later. Comes back. Madden yeah. NFL 20 came out. Is that really this week? Well, I've got a lot to say about Madden 20. Yeah. Uh, uh, Go Jets. I will play it (laughs) when it's on uh, when it's on EA Access. Isn't it? It not well. I mean, like I'll play it when it's all available. You're not Not gonna the ten hours. Not just the ten hours. You're gonna say nope. I'm gonna wait because you're gonna. That's what I usually do. Don't ask me why. Now you freak. Pachipacha. Doing it wrong. Am I? Am I doing it yeah, wrong? I could download it now. Yes, you could be telling the listeners about Madden 20 instead of them hearing me say go Jets. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we have to offer right now. It's our, <laughs> our new Madden 20 coverage. coverage. This week. <laughs> right. We have one game yeah, that we know. I can't out. find like <laughs> yeah, a yes. list anywhere. It's very strange. God damn. I think this is a conspiracy by Cage Robin Cock Goblin. Seriously. <laughs> Mm. Whatever it's called, mm. I can't remember that. That name is impossible to remember. By the way, you can only remember the individual words, and you'll, one of them will become Goblin. That's all I'm saying. The arcade archive for this week is Victory Road. Well, that's good. Mm-hmm. That's uh, Ikari Warriors, right? Uh, that Ikari Warriors three, three, right? Is that right? Three sounds okay. Right. Three. Okay, so Madden comes out tomorrow. Right. So, yeah, I'm just looking like, oh, so it's not, so we, we shouldn't blame you, is what you're saying? I'm just looking and see what comes out. Also, uh, the church in the darkness comes out tomorrow. And I thought we were moving on with the rest of the show. We, those are literally the only two games I could find that are coming out this week on the GameSpot new releases for this week. <laughs> just, just list those two on GameSpot, GameSpot, or GameStop, not stop. That's the stop. other annoying thing. GameStop should just change their name so we can stop making those mistakes between the two companies. <laughs> it's really annoying. 
All right, let's move on to news multi-platforming and Wombat's Rainbow Sexy Talk. So what's new in the world of rainbow sex? Uh, Are you killing it or what? I unlocked a rare charm for one of my guns, an epic charm. I was very happy with that. The Blackbeard Chibi Charm. Do they have a battle pass cool. for that game? Uh, No. No. There's no battle pass for that game. You just get points. And if you get enough points, you can buy a blind bag and open it up. Or if you win a round, you get a random a random chance of getting a blind bag. Fucking and I, I got like a that. random... I won the random chance. And I unlocked the blind bag. And in the blind bag was my charm for my gun. And it was very exciting. So you have a random chance of... Oh, it's the worst. Dude, Getting it's the fucking most obnoxious bag. thing. Dude, dude, you have to understand, With at least when I played Rainbow Six, when you, here's how it works with the, with the loot boxes and that. It's, I feel like it's the most obnoxious of all of them. Okay, you explain it's it. It's just unbelievable. So you only get a loot, a ch- you get a chance to get a loot box if you win the match, okay? And that it tells you what the chance is, your chance of getting a loot box. And it's like, so what does it start at? One and a half percent. It starts at two percent. Two percent. And if watch- you and if you lose the spin at two percent, then it jumps up to like four percent. And then the more you win, right. actually win or lose, the percentage increases a little. Yeah. Yeah, the same amount. So if you, you win it, or lose, but you it, just don't get a spin if you lose the game. It visualizes the game, ship. It visualizes. I don't know who thought this through. Like this was a that good stuff idea. should be behind the curtain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's visualize your shitty chance right in the center of the screen. So I don't know. I got give me something. What's so wrong with just giving me something? It's because because so it's, it's all this because that's the the blind box store. Everything. Well, not that it's a store, but the blind bag stuff you get is all the stuff that they sell, and you can buy anything you want without it being a blind purchase. It must work. So if there's must... something you really want, like if you really want that skin. Or that you know helmet yeah. or whatever you can just buy it. You don't have to wait for the. Well, no, we well, have to buy coin. You have to buy virtual currency to buy it, right? You have to buy the virtual and currency. Hope to that buy it, yes. hope that the thing you want to buy, you can buy that increment of currency. Most things you can. You can. It's not obnoxious like Apex. I don't think so. I just I don't remember. Know. Being, I've never spent any money. I found so. that entire there the entire that entire system in the game to be some of the most obnoxious of those. I uh, honestly like, don't care that much about the mo- <laughs> I think it's mostly because it visualizes your shitty chance. The way that it says like you're only going to get one if you win and you only I mean only get a chance at at a loot box if you win and also that chance is shitty. <laughs> yes, I agree. It would be nice if it was more often, but I don't know. Right. I suck. The I'm not going to win. Give the, me the fucking loot box. But the game itself is still Fine. a lot of fun. Fine. And it's still the game I like to play the most. Fine. And uh, between that and Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3, it's actually a kind of a nice balance because they're so very different. But those are the two games I'm playing. I'm still very close to the end of Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3. I got off on a little sidetrack trying to unlock those extra characters and uh, skins in the uh, that little grindy section, yep. which I do not like, yet I keep doing it because I want the stuff. Right. And all the skins are just palette swaps. They're not even reskins. I saw you complaining about that. Yeah, it sucks. It's bad. It's the game is not finished. They're gonna sell you some some good skins. Yeah, no, they probably will. But as it stands right now, I would say that that game is not finished. It's good. It's enjoyable. The it 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 you know the game doesn't suffer from it not being finished. Does that make sense? But uh, it no. it's not finished. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I know what you mean though. Yeah, it, it it's it's fine. Right. Rainbow Six is better. Rainbow Six but... needs a battle pass. Rainbow Six doesn't have it. Doesn't need a battle pass. That it's a. You fun don't even game. know what a battle pass is, dude. Yes, I do. What's it's a like battle on pass? Fortnite. And what's you, that do? You know, you get you get you do this. You kill five people. Right. You make it to level right. two. Wouldn't that be good? And then okay, so I you... guess. But I've already spent enough money on that game. I don't want to spend anymore. It gives. I like. I like the one in Apex this season because it gives you stuff to do. Yeah, and, and what about the first one, the one that you wasted your money? That on? was garbage. That I was exactly. So we don't want to do that. Well, that's why I got the cheap one this time, and that's the way to go. Is it? Yeah. Well, it just gives you, it gives you, you know, it gives you daily challenges to do. So, 
like I'm, I did win two matches like yesterday, I think. Okay. two in the same day. You know, okay. I, got, I got carried. Anyway, there's a lot of big news items this week, Wombat. So we got to we got to get to it already. Okay. Uh, I the, was just I was just cutting and copying and pasting the uh, new releases. It's back. They're back. They're back. Tech, Tech Dash Gaming. They did it. They must have. And the only new release worth talking about that we haven't already covered is Metal Wolf Chaos XD. Oh. What's that? That's the 360 era game from from software where you played as that's the one where you're playing as the president of the United States in a states in a mech, right? Yes. Okay. Something yeah. like that. It, ne- it never made it over here stateside. So right. Yay, we just talked about it. Mhm. Mm-hmm. All right. We talked about the new releases. Madden's on there. Got it. So let's talk. All right. Let's talk about Ninja leaving Twitch. Ninja's leaving Twitch and he's going to Mixer. That's pretty big news, I feel. It, it is big news. It's also, here's what's interesting, and I know we haven't talked about this yet, but it kind of goes together. Okay. He wasn't, he wasn't at the Fortnite World Cup. He was there. He was, was, he he was did- doing the play-by-play. Yeah, I know, but he, was he wasn't hosting. He was working it. But I was surprised he wasn't a com- a competitor. He was in like the pro am tournament, I believe. Not was in, he? Yeah. I, I was gonna say I thought he was supposed to be like the best Fortnite player in the He's world. He's the I best streaming streamer Fortnite player, right? He's the most that, popular, maybe. Right. Not like he's really good, but he's still not. But he's not like okay, because I guess like so. I guess the I was just I saw people arguing about this on Twitter and I don't know enough about it to sound educated. Okay. So it's not about how good he is. It's about how entertaining he is. He's really good just... too. Yeah. So it's the combination of the two. Yeah. Yes. And he's, you know, he's got a pedigree of professional gaming. But success. he's, but he's not past his prime or is oh, he past course. his prime? I think once you're past, I think your prime is pretty young in pro gaming. I think you pretty much you're that, you know, it can't be much past 20, right? I mean, I think you peek out pretty quick. But the idea is, it's not about how if, look, Microsoft is thought it like was worth Is this like Ladanian Tomlinson going to the Jets ship? I th- I don't, how much do the Jets pay him? A lot. Yes, then. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is that. <laughs> okay. That's where, I'm, that's where I'm trying to go. Well, He's... look, what is, what is, look, Mixer needs to do something. It's getting, yeah, it's they're, lunch they need to, to pay a bunch of money to one of the most popular streamers. Seems like a good strategy. Like, what else are you going to do? Not go for Dr. Disrespect because no one needs that press. That, and and he's the safe the safest one of all of them, right? Ninja yeah, is yeah. like he's got his little controversies and everything, and, and he doesn't like to. He won't be alone in a room with a woman that isn't his wife. But <laughs> right. you know, that's yeah. If that's like your controversy, it's pretty good for, <laughs> for, ga- for gaming. Yeah, yeah, for for you. Mike YouTube Pence wasn't people. available for Mixer, so they went with Ninja. I mean, it must have been a great offer. Oh, I'm sure. Th- I'm sure it's a very nice seven figure offer. Seven? Yeah. That's... Seven. No way. You don't think they offered them over a million dollars? More. I think it's yeah. I think it's uh, I think it's eight figure. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, thought yeah, you were yeah. I, I thought you were going with the less. No, was, no, 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 no. So, more, I, more, 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 more. In the millions, I this believe. This has they to be because them. look, he can always argue that look, this could ruin my career doing this move. Every all my fans are on Twitch. So you think they're gonna pay him like what, fifteen million dollars? One five, you said? Yes, one five. Um, I think it has to be enough for him. In my mind, if I'm Ninja, right? This Do we know ruin... how much he made last year? How much? No, I don't know. I don't know from thing. Twitch. I don't know how much he made. You have to think how much he made just from Twitch. But you have to think like this could ruin his career, right? Like the the opportunity, it could happen. So he has to make enough money, like now, <laughs> like guaranteed, to. Be set, like not have to worry, to be worry free. It's the only way he would do it, and it has to be so. Much, I mean, I wonder, like, if he even went back, if he gets gets this great offer. According to an article from June twenty ninth, two thousand eighteen, he was making one and a half million dollars a year, just from Twitch. Just uh, no, a month, dude. Oh, each month. Wow. Yeah. No. Never mind. Jeez. A month, dude. But it's a that's month. not just from Twitch. It's probably from other things. I mean, he has a yeah, lot of Yeah, I think he was making half a million dollars a month from Twitch. Just from Twitch? Yeah. So yeah. it's got to be enough so that he's set for life and he just doesn't have to worry about anything. That's And that's they can do that. Like, it, it, 
it it like doesn't wouldn't make sense for Twitch to match them to keep him probably, but it makes sense for Mixer to offer him that. Do you know what I'm saying? And I, I don't even know if it's a situation where he would go back to Twitch and say, "Hey, I have this offer from Mixer. Can you?" I'm guys sure do it is. Anything? You think so? I'm sure he he went back and. and or do you Twitch. think Microsoft comes at him with an offer and says, "Look, we don't even want you going back to Twitch. We don't want a bidding war." Where do we have to be to just avoid that? And he comes up with a number and they say, okay, and then that's it. Could be. Could be. It's, it's, uh, I don't know. But I think, uh, yeah, like what else is Mixer going to do? Like, it makes sense. That's what you got to do. Everything else is just sort of like, I don't know, like a circle jerk, really. You need to have the talent. I can't wait to watch him on Mixer. I I'm did. sure that I'm sure that when I launch my Xbox, it's not going to just be a giant picture of Ninja on it that says "Watch now on Mixer" every time I turn it on. <laughs> I'm sure that won't happen. No, definitely not. Nope. Those thing, things it's going to pop up. You know. Yep. Boink. I'm going to be playing hey, Rainbow Street Six. Us. I'm going to be Street. like I'm going to be running the table in a game of Rainbow Six, and right when I'm about to get that last kill, have you seen Ninja on Twitch? <laughs> right in the middle of my exactly. screen. Have on Mixer, seen? on Mixer, not, yeah. not on Twitch. On Mixer, right, right. sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's not working. They spent all that money. My words are not working today, so. <laughs> did you see the $50 Ninja Mystery Box that we bought at Target? I that, did. I that, watched the video. We all had did. no mention on the internet whatsoever until we, well, there was one mention of Ninja products coming out, like, in February, but there was no product listing for this thing anywhere in the on the internet, nor any videos or anything. So Ty and I got excited and we made a video and put it on YouTube. It looked like crap. And by the way, <laughs> it did when not you look do, like fifty dollars worth of stuff. <laughs> when you unbox a mystery box, uh-huh. you have to take everything, uh, lay it out on the table, and then shit. end the video with the shot of everything on the I, table. I had to make dinner. Of fifty dollars burning. <laughs> yeah. Of fifty dollars burning. Stuck in a bag of poop. I was with the amount, what you saw in the production was the effort. The I was amount of effort. Put, yes, yeah, I understand. Like, I had to, I had a lot of stuff to do that was a lot more important. <laughs> that, that almost seemed insulting though, that that was a $50 mystery. Yeah, box. It seemed like $20 worth of stuff. Um, yeah, it's a lot. Ninja, Ninja took a home probably uh, 30 bucks on that. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think he needs that. He doesn't need to put out any products anymore. Probably with this mixer money. It's awesome. Uh, what else do we want to talk about here in your rainbow sexy talk? We talked about the Fortnite guy winning three million, sort of. Fortnite guy. Well, won 3 I mean, million. did you watch any of it? No, I did. Elliot and I watched it together, and we enjoyed it actually I, yeah, thoroughly. Was, Ty was away or something. We yeah. see you won't. You know, I put it on. He was so excited. He didn't know it was what it, that it was going to be on. Right. And we watched almost the whole thing. Nice. We liked it. It was, you know, I'm not even a Fortnite guy, but I found the whole thing to be kind of exciting. They could have fine-tuned it a little bit better, but, you know, that's, I guess, nitpicky. But they, I think it would have been better if they had a kill cam during the match. Was it on, like, ESPN or something? No, it was streaming. (laughs) I actually watched it on Mixer. Nice. Just because it was the the first place I saw it. Oh, you mean the home of Ninja? The home of Ninja, and it was, but it was the same everywhere. It streamed. I think they had two million concurrent streamers across all streaming platforms, um, and it was pretty good. Except they would like, they could only follow one person at a time, and sometimes they'd be following someone that just kind of did nothing for too long. Me, and you could see the the counter go down in the background, like you know, to ninety nine, seventy five, and I'm like, well, where are those twenty five kills coming from? Right. I want to see what happened. Yeah, I want to see that. It would be nice if there was a way that they could jump, kind of like a uh, red zone on ESPN, where they could be like cutting away now to uh, you know bubble butt ninety seven. Of course they can. I mean, yeah, but they they didn't do that. Right. So, but it's nice to see some kid win three million dollars. Good for him. I had a really good time explaining to one of Ty's friend's moms why Fortnite is so addictive and try to help her get over this <laughs> horrible thing that's happening to her life where her son is addicted to Fortnite. You know, she's like, oh, you know a lot about video games. What's going on? How come my son only wants to play Fortnite and all his friends stay up till one in the morning playing Fortnite and they're 11? And I was like, oof. 
<laughs> I literally ex- explained like the concept of battle royale and like the rush you get just not just from loot boxes, but really from randomly from playing pick- the game. Well, from randomly picking up weapons, you don't know what weapons you're going to get and starting up, you know, the adrenaline rush you get from starting from a big group and getting down to to a, you know, two or three people for the victory. It's sort of unique in that way. And yeah, she was, she was really beside herself. Like, it's really like, it's overwhelming for a lot of these moms. Like they just don't know, they don't understand it. They don't understand the forces at play, like on the kids' brains, you know, with these, these random events. So, you know, not gambling, but close enough to gambling to do something to us. It's a little scary. For these moms, yes. I should start a counseling service. You should just have the moms over your house on a regular basis. Film it. It's interesting. I mean, I, I wish I recorded the conversation. I thought I did a really good job of explaining it. I bet you did. Hmm. Uh, what else we got here? I don't want to talk about this. Oh, let's talk about this PAX thing. All right. This is this is a controversial. So you know mm-hmm. Colin Moriarty, right? Yes. He... He's like a sort of controversial. He's a libertarian, I believe. Right. He does a lot of, he puts out a lot of video game content, videos and podcasts and, and very political popular. political stuff too, right? Doesn't he have like a political he has thing? A political stuff too, but all, you know, also just game centric stuff. And he's got a very popular Patreon. Ron, that you shouldn't look at it because it would probably upset you how popular it is. I don't he want is. to. Yeah, you don't want to know. Anyway, he had a panel. He had a, a, a PlayStation panel. I guess I think he does a, play, a, a PlayStation show, a podcast or, or a video series about PlayStation, and that was going to be represented at PAX, and it was the panel was approved, and just it was just canceled without reason. They just sent him a, basically a letter, a pol- you know, saying, "Hey, we had we had to cancel your, <laughs> hey, we had to cancel your panel. Don't worry, we're still going to give you free passes to the show, but no panel. Bye." And he doesn't. He wants basically he just wants an explanation why his panel was canceled. Is it because he's he's a? You think it's because he's a conservative leaning uh, political show host? Well, people are saying. You know, I, I was doing a little research for the show. It does happen once in a while, so I sort of uh-huh. googled this thing, and I wound up on NeoGaf. Remember NeoGaf? I do. That was a site. Yeah, yeah. It's still a site, and it looks different now. But I I also learned that now, like NeoGaf. Is like the right. Remember, we said there should be like a right wing video game site. Is that it? Yeah, that's what happened. Because all the, all like the, you know, the people with empathy and the compassion left, l- left and went to Reset Era or Reset Era. I don't know. I think it's you, Reset Era. Well, I don't know. It works both ways, guys. I think that's why they chose that. Um, and yeah, so the, the people on NeoGAF are now talking about. The SJWs on Reset Era, and I'm assuming the reverse is happening on Reset Era. Um, but yeah, they're saying like, oh, like PAX is deplatforming, you know, right wing speakers like like Colin. But this was a PlayStation panel, and certainly like the Penny Arcade guys have said some things that made the general public go wince. Yeah, wince is a good term for it like i remember some controversy certainly back in the day um but then again they're not they don't even run the show anymore it's outsourced to to, a completely different company um so do you think the 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 show owes this guy an explanation of why they canceled their panel i I think if you cancel anyone's panel issue of course you can you can but it's kind of like no i'm saying i know i i as much as I don't agree with anything he ever has to say, well, I do well, agree not, with... Well, probably not everything. There's probably some eh, things. Probably everything. I mean... Um, <laughs> I, I bet we don't even agree on ice cream flavors. Um, but... He's from Long Island, you know, Wombat. I, trust me, I... That I, doesn't that, put him in anymore in your favor, I know. Mm-mm. That wouldn't... It should, and nor should it. Uh, I do uh, bel- uh, I do think that, <laughs> you know, at least they should... If someone cancels that panel on you that close to the date, then yes... They should uh, explain it, especially if you've had to incur costs in order to set up this panel. Yeah, I'm sure he's he had his flight 
locked down at least. It's it's not even just the flight. And it's the flight. It's the Other hotels. Plans. It's Other if plans. you know if you were doing a panel, you may get have giveaways. You may have uh, you know a banner or whatever. It doesn't matter. Right. You spent he, money. He probably got his um his clan hood just freshly pressed right before. <laughs> exactly. It costs money. Starched. Starched, starched and bleached. And, yeah, I mean come on. No, that's a joke. Was it? Um, certainly <laughs> if I was in if I was in his shoes and I've been on a PAX panel once or twice, um yeah, I would definitely be upset and would least like to have an explanation from my fans. Like you know, something, even if it's bullshit. Just like tell me something and at least me and my fans can, you know, drag you about how bullshit your explanation is. But something would be good, I guess. I'm not that upset about it, in case you're wondering. <laughs> it's keeping me up at night. It's Yeah. You're, are you sorting out are you, in your brain when you have a fever how, how we could solve this problem? Yes. <laughs> Many spreadsheets. <laughs> Venn diagram. Not Venn diagram. Flow charts. Flow yes. Charts. All right. Um, sure. Sure. You have uh, some Borderlands 2 review for us? Yeah. Borderlands 2. Yeah. I played some DLC that I'd never played before. How is that t- Tiny Tina's Assault on Dragon? That Deep? is really good. What a surprise. This this is my review of DLC from six years ago. Talk about bias. Right. So this is, this is like, it took us like 10 hours to get through this thing. This is some serious DLC. Is this the free one now or something? Well, everything is in, no, no, no. And that one's gone. That that oh. was that was the new DLC. No, that else. was the, uh, um... Oh, are you literally reviewing something that came out like six yeah. years ago? Yeah, I am. Oh, yeah. good, good, good. Okay, it's yeah. good. It 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 is like a Dungeons and Dragons setting for Borderlands. Yeah, Tiny Tina is like a dungeon master. Yeah, right? isn't she telling it? To, yeah, yeah, she's telling the story. Oh, that sounds fun. It is fun, mm-hmm. and it, it's it's substantial as well. So, how it, many days until Borderlands Three comes out? Uh, I, it keeps telling me to pre It's like a month and a half, right? Yeah, it's September. September 18th, I believe. Yeah, they email me about it a lot, too. So No. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They they must not know that you're not buying it, Wombat. I maybe. <laughs> <laughs> right. They they're really trying to change my mind though. Right. So oh. And then I <laughs> then I also I also watched a lot of Paw Patrol on a roll. Oh yeah, everybody's waiting to hear about the, that. The, it, well, it finally dropped to twenty dollars. I had been watching it for I don't know, like I think it came out in April or something like that. Oh, this is a game. This is a game. Oh, okay. It's the Sorry. Paw Patrol game. I mean, obviously. Mm-hmm. Do you play as the fire truck dog? I think you mean Marshall. Uh, yeah. You play as all of the Paw Patrol characters, including Whoa. hold the fucking phone, including Everest and Tracker. Wait, do you play as Everest? Uh, you do play as Everest. What about That's Tracker? That's fucking insane. You you could play as Tracker. Fuck. I can't believe it. I, if you're I, not I familiar with Everest that. and Tracker, wow. think of them as like the Care Bear cousins of the Paw Patrol world. Wow. Are they like a cat? No, the cats are the bad... I feel like I'm, I you knew nothing about Paw Patrol, I bet. Well, he's I, pretending for the audience. Okay, you know? good. Yeah, the audience I'm, may not I'm being the everyman for the audience. Exactly. Right, right. No, the cat. The cats are, for the most part, they're Mayor Humdinger's uh, henchmen. He's he's why the bad is, mayor. Why is the mayor a bad guy? He's the mayor of Foggy Bottom. I, I understand that. <laughs> First of all, that that's an inappropriate name for a town. Mm. Well, yes, he's he's the he's the bumbling bad guy. He should be in jail, mm. really. Because of all the problems. Foggy Bottom is one letter away from being a slur, and I don't appreciate it. Mm. So Paw Patrol on a roll, though, the game. That is a good game for for kids. Like, this is the first game that Emmeline has been able to pick up a, con- a controller and play all the way through on her own. Be- beat the game. Tov. Did you take a picture and put it in her scrapbook? I submitted it to Nintendo Power. <laughs> good. Maybe you'll get a patch. Mm-hmm. An iron-on. <laughs> So it's a 2D platformer where there's no enemies. It's just all collecting and getting getting through the levels and solving some light puzzles. Oh, this sounds perfect for Wombat. Hmm? Right amount of difficulty. It, it is. It, I think hmm. you'd be very pleased, Wombat. <laughs> there are some flying sections that may give you some problems. I'm out. 
Can I play online co-op? Uh, this is a single player game. Is there any multiplayer? There are no uh, microtransactions. Oh, sold. <laughs> Loot boxes? No, no, <laughs> definitely none, not. None of this. It is. Can I un- can I unlock old ass video hats? games? You can you can unlock pictures. You can unlock nothing. Is what you'll get. You'll unlock the next level as you beat the level before it. Wow, that sounds like a weird concept, <laughs> but whatever. the The odd thing is like. They went to the trouble of so every Paw Patrol has this scene where the the pups that are selected for the mission they uh, jump into the slide that's at the top of the tower and then they slide down and get into their uh, transforming vehicle. You don't have to explain it. I don't. You know that, right? He already came, Shepard. Okay. okay, he's done. He's already he's got the tissues. So cleaning up instead of just taking that that scene from the show. They recreate that in the game for every every character. It's it seems like it's quality production. Oddly enough, that's more effort than they put into Marvel Ultimate Alliance. Right, 3. right. It's like wh- okay, I appreciate that. Like, there's not like a disconnect in the graphics here, but really, you could have just taken the the existing CGI from the and just yeah and just in Marvel Ultimate it. Alliance three in cutscenes when you go to like talk to someone, mm-hmm. whoever it might be, like Red Skull or whatever. And it goes jumps to the cutscene. It doesn't matter what your four characters you've been playing for the last hour are. Oh, nice! It's gonna it's gonna switch over to the four characters that they made to be in the cutscene. I love that's that. Really good. That's I, good. I do love quality. That. I'm like, oh, come on! When you absolutely, positively do not give a shit about the game, that you're <laughs> it is the it is the most budget thing. It's like, oh, I've been playing as Wolverine and Magneto and right. Deadpool right. and Spider Man. But now it's Thor and Captain America. <laughs> right. It's not fair to say they, they don't give a they, shit. I'm sure they, they give went a with shit. The odds. The time. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> the oh, and, and, odds. it's like, oh, it's Thor, Captain America, Black Widow, and Iron Man here uh, <laughs> talking. Uh, <laughs> and it's every time. And every time I'm like, come on. I'm disappointed every time. Right. I'm, this is going to be like, the time. It, it's just a bug, all those other Yeah, I'm like six levels in. I'm like, <laughs> it would have been better every if time they I... just had every cutscene had every character in the game. <laughs> <laughs> They're just all just standing there. They're all just there. They're just yeah. all just standing there in a pile talking to Red and, Skull. And that's sort of what kind of makes it a little, little annoying because you they almost make it. That's sort of what they're implying by having it be four different people. In which case, it's like, then why am I fighting these people with only these four people? Then let's just throw the whole damn characters yeah, just on the screen put every at once. Character into the cutscene, just <laughs> just just a flat image of of every character in the game. How about cardboard standees? That'd be f- mm. perfect. Either that, or it comes up and it randomly cycles through characters and asks you if this is the one you're playing as oh, <laughs> before it's it plays the cutscene. It's not. It's that's not good. <laughs> no. <sighs> they gotta get the Paw Patrol team pissed. on this. Right. Seriously. They got good budgets over there. Mm-hmm. I'd like to have the Paw Patrol budget. There's. I'm. I'm not lying about that. That seems. Maybe to be they're a, just efficient. That seems to be a pretty good uh, gig if you're in on that Paw Patrol license. What's the Metacritic on that? Paw Patrol, oh, what? Uh, on a roll. On a roll. I can't. That's not a game that needs to be reviewed. I don't think anyone ever reviewed it, no. that. Oh, yeah. no. PlayStation Country reviewed it. Okay. They gave it a 60. Okay. And so did that, GameOver.gr. Uh-huh. That, the those fuck? both sound is that reasonable. Greek? Are the, is that Greek? Yeah. Are these reviewers five or six years old? <laughs> it's Greek. Okay. What? It's Greek. It's in Greek. So, you know, might as well be. It does look pretty good, though. All right, can we move on? (laughs) Yes, we can move on. Let's move on. I think we're at the keg bag. I believe we are. I think we've made it. Yes, we we, we have made it. Um, At Rampart Random wants an update on the M Classic shipwreck. Have you played with the M Classic anymore? I I have played with it some, and it does what it says it does. I mean, it's an anti-aliasing little GPU thing. Um. I would say it definitely has its limitations. You're going to want to use it on early generation um, and Nintendo, uh, later Nintendo systems, like stuff that's in 3D, uh, 3D polygon type stuff. Um, 
Super Nintendo? No. No. Oh, past Super past Nintendo. Past Super Nintendo. So this this is for things that uh would likely have an HDMI output already or component like kind of that age. Oh, what? So like what? So like a uh, GameCube, we uh, Xbox, X- original Xbox? Xbox. Yeah, original okay. Xbox. Uh PS2, PS3, uh Switch. Huh. Okay. Uh so that generation's of stuff is where this stuff like it makes Wait, a difference. Wait, did you just say Switch? Uh-huh. What does it do to the Switch? It depends on the games. So some Switch games kind of run at 720 instead of 1080. So if right. it's if it's a right, 720 right, right, game, right, right. it'll make it make it uh, a lot smoother. Fills huh. in those bumps. Yep. Um so if you're looking for it for like old older consoles, 2D, you're just not gonna get a benefit like a huge benefit from it. Right. So it, it's so let's say like Dreamcast, you'll see it there. Um now some of these consoles would require you to have some kind of adapter to get it into HDMI format to begin with. But it's it's a good little product. And it, I think I don't know if it's still on sale for sixty nine dollars. They have a uh a oh what it, not a Kickstarter, but the other one. GoFundMe? GoFundMe, I think maybe. Yeah. They have one of those going. Uh I tweeted out something about it. So I know at least for a while they had them on sale for sixty nine dollars. They still might. I think they're gonna be ninety nine dollars normally. So all right. Yeah, it's I it's a very specific niche. It is, but it's like But it's people out there who are looking for that. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it's a good product. It's the it's always difficult with these things, like because they have so many like buzzwords on the packaging and on their websites and everything that it seems like every one of these products is selling snake oil. But Right. But because some people not. look at it and they think hey, Oh, how can just how can just a cable like a be- they think it's a better quality cable? You know, like when you go to Best Buy and they have like a fifty dollar HDMI cable. I think people may get that impression, it, which I think is why they probably went, went not a cable this time. Oh, did they not? No, okay. this is just like a little dongle now. Ah, okay, yeah, that makes that's good. Yeah, because I bet you people a lot of people. I remember when we talked about this thing the first time, mm-hmm. people were like, oh, what is this? Some sort of scam? Yeah. So I think the dongle is a better form factor too, because then you can just hook up whatever cable you want to it. So I have it, I plug it into an HDMI splitter. So all my cables go to that. And so I already have a cable that goes from that HDMI splitter. This is a better solution for me. Nice. And you get to say dong Mm -hmm. every time you say dong. I I love saying dong all the time. Yeah. Who doesn't? Uh, Oh, we have a special LI retro CAG bag. Because it's right around the corner. Yep. August Getting ready for episode, big episode 600. No, Rombat. So mm-hmm. we have we have to do a show next week. Cause we oh, have, never mind. You know, we have all these sponsor commitments. Okay, so we'll do it. Uh, we'll do this, we'll it's going to be so 600. 601. It's going to celebrate our 600 shows. <laughs> gotcha. Uh, uh, we'll be celebrating 600 shows at Long Island Retro. It'll be 601. That'll be our celebration episode. I like it. I'm on yeah, board. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because if you if it's the 600th episode, you haven't really accomplished anything, because you're really only celebrating 599 episodes. Do you think they're buying it? I don't think so, but I like <sighs> where you're. I like your uh, your spin. Okay. I also like that you're doing this in your ad voice. <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> um. So yeah, August 11th. 12.30 to 1.30. That's when the CAG pass, CAGcast panel is going to take place at LI Retro. So we have some special LI Retro CAG bag questions. Uh, this one's from at Top Hat 666 He says, first time coming to LI Retro. He's a native New Yorker, but he's never taken the Long Island Railroad before. Yeah, I guess why would you? Uh, any tips or know-how? Is the weekend travel worse, et cetera? No, weekend travel is better. It usually is better. There's fewer trains on the weekend. And just be aware of any track work. Because that's the that's done on the weekends as well. Get the app. So basically, you know, get the app, check your schedules, buy your ticket before you get on the train. You buy your ticket on fine. a different app. Than yes. the actual, it's really a great system. You have to get an app to buy the ticket and then a different app to know what time the train's coming. It's a great system. They're very efficient. Very good. And then there's another app. 
that'll tie in like the buses as well. If you want to know when the buses are coming to. And I would train. say take an Uber from the train station to the to the venue. Yeah, it goes basically you can take it's on three different Long Island Railroad lines. Just go to the 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 website for LA Retro it tells you which stations are there. And then it's a t- it's a 10 to 12 minute uh Uber ride from the train station. So easy. The question the answer is it's easy. Um, let's see here. What else we got? Oh, at Red Tank 2K6 wants to know if Wombat's going to be. Oh, will all, will all three of us be wearing rainbow, rocking rainbow Crocs at the LI Retro? It. You know what? I just don't think because there's a lot of walking around, and I I wouldn't want to walk around in the Crocs all day. Interesting. So that's probably why I won't wear them. So don't expect to see any rainbow Crocs. Yeah, no, I don't think for, I'm going to wear them. I'm for, sorry. I won't either. Forget about all I, of us. I thought about it because obviously I thought it would be funny, but yes, yeah, you know, I got my I got my my laugh out of it when I wore them to breakfast, which you know mm. that was the goal then. So, if you're not going to do that, can you at least split your pants or something at some point during the panel? I will do my best. I'll wear my Mac Weldon shorts. Well, those are never going to split those. That's like nope. literally impossible. Right? I tried I that when I was sick. <laughs> <laughs> That's that's an interesting choice of 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 shorts for when you're sick, because Why? they're comfortable. They're very comfortable, but you're going to be sweating a lot. Well, I probably see, wouldn't I wear was, any pants. I was switching between. Uh, should we save this ad for next week, or are they our sponsor next week? <laughs> Oops, <laughs> Maybe I, I was know. switching between. Okay, let's let's wait. Let's, the shorts let's table the and the pants. Let's table the shorts talk then. Okay, I wouldn't wear pants if I had a fever. I feel. Oh, but you if, get that hundred. You get that hundred fever. Oh, the chills. The chills. Cold. Yeah. Should I wear my really expensive right. sneakers? Maybe. Maybe. No. No. We're just gonna point and laugh at them. I what can wear of, the ones are that are like. Yeezys? I can wear. You got Yeezys. I have my new ones that I just got from work. Also, that are like four different colors. I'll wear the, those. Are they Yeezys? You'll see them when I wear them. I'll see these them. You'll see these them when I wear. What are they? Are they like uh, Supreme? No, they're like some sort of designer that I've never heard of. Uh, Valenciana Reebok. something. Dolce oh. Gabbana. Brand Black. Louis Vuitton. I something? just said the name. Is it um Timberland? Yes, Timberland. Those Brand Black. Brand Black? That sounds lame. Shipwreck, what do you think of Brand Black? I'm going to Google that right now. Brand Black. Sneakers. The, is it the Triple Black from the Royale? Uh, Here they are, thirty nine dollars and ninety seven cents at Nordstrom Rack. Is that the ones you have? Um, I I don't know which ones are. No, he has he has these ones that are three hundred and eighty six dollars. Damn! Oh, they like the they're like a dad shoe. Look, yeah, right? kind of. They have like a sock, an inner ask sock, Anibal. We'll have to and, ask Anibal if they're cool. And and stuff. I like socks. Yeah, inner socks. They look like the Saga I, sneakers a little bit. Those. Look like Sonic shoes? Is that what you said? No, the Saga. I think they're the brand Black Sagas. Yeah, that's what Saga. I was saying. That's the three hundred eighty-six dollar ones. Yeah, I see them here for one ninety-six, but maybe I'm just looking at the. Oh, I'm not, I'm, I'm on but a they're not in the color website. that I have. Yeah. Anyway, they're not enjoy, that cheap. Enjoy them. Mm-hmm. I didn't pay for them. I don't care. That's why you're going to enjoy them. Yep. <laughs> are they comfortable? They are because they have that sock lining in them. And they make me like two inches taller. Yeah, I can see there. They look very chunky. Yeah. Well, like I said, maybe I'll wear them. You, you might enjoy them. Maybe. Um, anything else here? Oh, you put the link here. I'm guessing. Oh, at Gaming Groceries writes in and asks, looking forward to seeing, meeting anyone at LA Retro? You, Games and Groceries, you. Right. I remember meeting you last year. Me too. Oh, yeah, those are the exact ones I have. Good job, Ship. You found them. Oh, I'm going to click on them. Farfetch. Wow. I don't look, I don't think I could walk in those. They, they don't look, look like elevator They don't look shoes. like they're shaped for feet. Yeah. Right. They look like cement blocks. <laughs> I wear the opposite of those shoes with like nothing between the foot and the floor. I'm just, I, again, can I you did walk in not. Those? Huh? Can you actually walk in those? Yeah, I mean, I've only worn them once, but yes, I can walk okay. in them. <laughs> Enjoy them. No, because they really—they look like you could fall off them. 
Nope. I'll be. I'll, I'll wear them for the show. It'll be fun. Yay. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna wear plastic bags on my feet. Ex- exciting. As contrast. Okay. Uh, looking forward. The problem is with look with seeing meeting anyone specifically at LA Retro, is that we're all wrangling our children during LA Retro, so it's not like I don't know. There's not a lot of socializing going on except between ourselves. I feel is that accurate? Yeah, that probably. To say mm-hmm. nope, it's not. It's not weird. I would say shipwreck's the only person I'm looking forward to seeing. Hmm. Interesting. Right, we do need to focus on Shipwreck. <laughs> There's not a lot of opportunities to see him, so it's like mm-hmm. we got to take. It's, full the only, it's the only time of year I get to see him. Yeah. So, I, I, I mean, I, I enjoy the my life in gaming guys, so they'll yeah. they'll be there. <laughs> but are you going to be able to see their panel? Oh, I won't see their panel, but if they're walking right. around, like I've, I've right, you'll see. I've them. talked to Corey before because he lives here. In Northern Kentucky, and he's got a life in gaming. And so do you. He does. He does. Retro RGB is going to be there. Ruth Bader Ginsburg is going to be there. Yep. <laughs> Retro Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Retro. <laughs> yes. Oh, I can't even make any jokes. He's, he's he's got a good website that tells like that's where I learned about how to do most of the retro stuff and what the what the good stuff to buy was. So right. They've got a good. They've got a, a lot of good people there this year. They have a big lineup this year. They do. This guy, Frank Cifaldi, who I just started following on Twitter. He's a good follow on Twitter. Yeah. He is. He, I, I've, I feel like I've been following him for a long time. Yeah. I thought I was following him because people just retweet him all the time. And then I realized that I wasn't. And then I followed him and he put out like this monster thread. And I was like, oh, no. Too big. <laughs> Too big. But no, I'm sticking with it. Um. So, yeah, go to liretro.com. Buy your tickets. Come see us. Come see one of that fancy sneakers. And spill wine on them. Uh, what I, th- I think we're d- are we done with the show? I was I mean, picturing like as you were saying that I, I right before you said that I was picturing Wombat just dropping like a frosty all over his shoes for some reason. Like that just right. seems like that would be something that would happen to his four hundred dollars sneakers. You think Wombat behaves like an eleven year old child? Is what you're saying? Eleven year old boy, sloppy. Uh, I don't know like if my it'd son, be him that would be dropping. It, it just seems like he's the kind of person who gets a frosty drop on his feet. <laughs> is what I'm saying. Oh. You still there, Wombat? Huh? Wombat. What? What? Who? What? What are you doing? I'm waiting for you to wrap it up. Are you eating a frosty? What's what's, what's happening? <laughs> what? We're doing. We're in the middle of the show. <laughs> what show? I have well, no we're idea. We're not in the middle on. of the show. We're at the end of the show. You I know. Hang in. You can't hang in for the end of the show. I, I was here. I was fine. I was listening to you guys. You, I'm sorry that I wasn't chiming in more when you guys were making fun of me. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, I I didn't realize I was supposed to join in. Yeah, Wombat sucks. I hate him. <laughs> no, yeah, no. He is. I, have you ever had? He a is the kind of guy that someone would just lower their pants and take a shit right, right on his head. That's not what I was going for. I was just. It seems oh, to be no, kind of. Like, Whenever I see Wombat, I think there's a guy who needs a turd on him. Uh huh. It's a frosty. I'm a turd. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was. Li- I, oh. <laughs> Assholes to both of you. Uh, I didn't say I was going to drop a frosty on your feet. Uh huh. <laughs> Wombat seems like the kind of guy. You know those guys that are like just so gross that everything they eat, they just falls right out of the bottom of the cup. That's. <laughs> That's, I didn't even say it was you that was dropping the frosty. The frosty was just somehow hitting your. You know the kind of guy like you're in a place that doesn't even sell frosties, right? But somehow he has one. Now, yes, one. this is what I'm saying, Wombat. <sighs> I was I was merely comparing you to an 11 year old child, Wombat. I don't know why you would take offense at that. It's just beyond me. <laughs> oh. For the record, my 11-year-old child is very mature for her age. No, I bet. I was going to say like a boy specifically. I bet you Sabrina doesn't spill anything on her clothes. No, she does not. Right. I buy Ty. Like I find these great deals on kids' Nike stuff. Like I try to get like cool stuff for them. And I, you know, I buy all this stuff. It's like on sale. It's like awesome. Fucking stains everything. Like like the first time he wears it. Stain. Mm. He stained a pair of black sweatpants. How do you stain black sweatpants? It's almost impossible. Frosties. 
Fro- frosties. He must have like it must have been a frosty made out of vegetable oil or something. Like I don't know what happened. Mm-hmm. It's like, dude. Anyway, so yeah, well, I'm at. Hang in there while we insult you, please. <laughs> that's serious. That's at all we're asking. In, at least till we get to ninety that's, minutes. Yeah, that's all uh. we're asking. We're here. Can I go now? <laughs> yeah. Well, let's wrap up on that. Let's remind everybody to go to harrys.com slash CAG to claim your special offer and go to liretro.com to buy tickets so you can come to LA Retro and make fun of Wombat and have him tune out. <laughs> like it. it is a good defense mechanism. It is. I thought yeah. something could happen to him. Right. I thought that we lost the connection, but I'm just I'm staring at his icon here. So I see he's, he's still there. I'm here. No, no, I know, I, I know. It's mm-hmm. okay. Good job, Wombat. Thanks. We did it. We made it. We we went the distance for the most part. Uh we'll see you next week. Bread's done. Wendy's has the taste. That one. And triple. Hamburgers fresh, not frozen. We have the taste. Great Don't chili. Let the others have their slogans. Wendy's makes them fresh each day. Serves them up to you hot off the grill. Two hundred fifty-six way. The way a good restaurant will. We have the taste. Thick, frosty. Wendy's has the taste. Wendy's, oh,